Assalamu alaikum, shalom, hotep, assalamu alaikum, peace to the streets. I'm your brother in the struggle, brother minister Alif. And today I would like to share with y'all a lesson by Messenger Elijah Muhammad from the lesson book titled, The 17 Ways to Display Islamic Culture. The messenger gives us these principles, Jews of Islam. Number one, be patient where others are concerned. This is an important principle because, you know, you have to realize that we're not all on the same levels. I mean, some people know more than you know. Some people may not know as much as you know. I mean, so, you know, Without thinking about it, we'd be so quick to criticize, to find fault, to point out the mistake, the negativity, you know what I mean? And the Holy Quran teaches us about sabori, our patience. You know, we have to be patient where others are concerned. You know I mean, patience, as they say, is a virtue. Number two, Remember that time where when we who knows now knew not then? Let me say that again. Remember that time where when we who knows now knew not then? That's an important principle of maturity. Now, I mean, when we are blessed to gain some insights, to become more and more conscious, and I mean, you know, it's like, uh, you know, if you're a new believer, you don't know a lot. You don't understand a lot. So you basically got to take other people on face value. You know what I mean? You know, and, you know, you're going to make mistakes. You know what I mean? You're going to struggle. You're going to struggle with your prayers, with learning lessons, with fasting, with discipline. You're going to make mistakes drilling or exercising or whatever. You know what I mean? You're a novice. That, that goes with the territory. No one expects a physical newborn baby to just jump up and start running. We expect that baby to struggle, to crawl, to bump into things, to stand up and wobble and fall. You know what I mean? To get their little boo-boos. But eventually they're going to start walking. They're going to start walking tall. They're going to start running. You know what I mean? You know, it's stages. You know what I mean? And, you know, imagine an eight-year-old looking at a toddler <laughs> and criticizing a two-year-old because it can't run as fast as the eight-year-old can run. That would be a childish ment mentality in a physical realm. And the mother would reprimand that child. The father would reprimand it, trying to get them, you know, you got to be patient where others are concerned, as we said earlier. And basically the principle is the same spiritually. We have to remember that time where, when, we who knows now knew not then. Number three, therefore, do not place yourself above another Muslim because he does not know. I mean, a lot of people, you know, they find fault and criticize. I remember we used to be at FY class and, um, you know, we had this um, sincere brother captain, you know what I mean? But he wasn't patient <laughs> where others are concerned, you know what I mean? And he used to, like, chew brothers up, you know what I mean, if they didn't know that general orders or a lesson or something like that there, you know what I mean? And, and basically, you know, he was coming off like a bully. A spiritual bully, but a bully all the same. You know what I mean, you know, and um, it was like a challenge for me because I used to be a captain, but Allah blessed me to eventually become a minister. But I had to reflect because my thing was at the time I knew the lessons, so I wanted to really be like, you know, okay, he know a couple of lessons. He don't know no lessons compared to me. So I was like ready to checking. By like, let me hear you recite the Lost Found Miles of Lesson Number One. Let me hear you recite Lost Found Miles of Lesson Number One. Give me the 99 actual facts. But I had to humble myself. It's his class. Even though 
I had a little more authority than him, I was humble enough to be patient where others are, even, even if I'm thinking he's wrong. Now, and he was wrong, but I had to remember when I was in his shoes, when I used to be assistant captain, a first lieutenant, a squad leader, I was making all kinds of mistakes. I my, you know, it's like, it's like it goes with the territory. You have your learning curves. Now, I mean, as long as you're not jeopardizing a person's life, livelihood, property, you know what I mean, disrespecting someone, that, that, that's, that's just normal, you know what I mean? So I had to be patient where he was concerned, you know what I mean? And hold my tongue. And the brother, without me even realizing or even remembering it, you know, he started doing other things and he started spiritually growing and, and, and improving the brotherhood, you know what I mean? And, you know, um, as time went on, <laughs> He was an excellent captain last time I seen him. I mean, so we have to remember number three. Therefore, do not place yourself above another Muslim because he does not know. So it's not just someone being wrong or someone else judging somebody else. We also have to be careful not to judge them. Now, I mean, you know, we have to, as the scriptures teach us in the Bible, you know, I mean, we have to, you know, be slow to judge. Now, I mean, we have to remember that, you know, our lessons teach us, you know, judging is for a law. If you must judge, let them judge themselves. We're going to get into that. The lesson even covers all that. Now, I mean, so we have to be patient with each other. Now, I mean, we're, we're often so quick to criticize and condemn and complain and to nag, you know what I mean? And that can hinder a person's growth and development. You know what I mean? So just because you may know a little bit more on something. Don't be so quick to find fault. I mean, there's a way to correct your brother or sister, Muslim, who has fell in there, and the message teaches us in here, in the manner of strict private correction. So let me let me go to number four. The messenger says, judging is for a law. If you must judge, let him judge himself. Judging is for a law. If you must judge, let him judge himself. This does not negate the woman. Now, I mean, so when it says he, your maturity, your interpretation should be judgments for law. If you must judge, let him or her judge themselves. I mean, so, you know, we have to be patient with each other. Now, I mean, you know, you know, it's easy to, you know, want to take the speck out our brother or sister's eyes while we got a, mo or a whole tree in our own eye. All right. Number five. Do not look on the bad side of things that appear bad to us. There is always a good side. It is better to take that side. That's an important principle. Do not look on the bad side of things that appear bad to us. There is always a good side. It is better to take that side. You have dominant and recessive thoughts. You have optimists and pessimists. You have people that be like, the glass is half empty. I would be like, the glass is half full. You know what I mean? So, you, you know, you can you can deal in the God plane or the devil plane. You can deal with the negative or the positive. You know what I mean? You'll find that if you humble yourself, if you treat people the way you would want them to treat you, if you be a brother to your brother or sister or to the stranger, you'll find that you yourself benefits, you will have that sakin or that inner peace. Now, I mean, you, you, would, you would develop that sabor, that sabori, that patience. Now, I mean, and it'll take you far in life. It, it, it'll help you to help others in their growth and development in Islam as taught by Messenger Elijah Muhammad. Okay, number six. Actions are judged by intentions. Actions may appear wrong, but motives bring rewards. Let's read that one more time. Actions are judged by intentions. Actions may appear wrong, but motives bring rewards. All things are relative, family. I mean, every everything's. I was I was just um, building the day, and you know, we just studying and. You know, it was it was some research on 
the origins of life itself. You know what I mean? And the different hypotheses and theories, you know, and ideas that's out there regarding life and how you had different um, scientists that experiment with creating life. You know what I mean? And I had to be patient where others are concerned because in my head, I'm like, as y'all said, this is some pseudoscience. I mean, this is some Eurocentric nonsense, actually, but I didn't say that. I thought it, but I didn't say it. I mean, because I understood that some of the stuff they were saying was true. Some of that stuff had merit, a lot of merit. I mean, and there are things that I don't know. There are things that I don't understand, but I, I I took the middle ground, you know what I mean? And basically, you know, we was talking about organic and inorganic life. And, you know what I mean? Basically, you have some people, some scientists believe that life started in water. Some people believe that life started from an organic rock. Some people believe it came from clay, um, from meteorites crashing into the earth, from... Um, electricity sparking life in the waters is creating amoebas, you know what I mean? And things of that nature. But it's like, in my humble opinion, when you look at it holistically, trying to understand the material realm of the black man's mind, you know what I mean? And I basically look at Everything in creation is alive. I mean, if you have a mountain, that mountain is alive. If you have a rock, if you have an amoeba, a molecule of water, if you have an insect, if you have a snowflake, if you have an exploding star, if you have an atom, it's alive. How can it not be alive? How can it not have it? Think about this. Hydrogen and oxygen bonds and forms liquid water that mathematically vibrates and freezes at 32 degrees and is liquid and turns into a vapor or steam at 212 degrees. That's mathematics. That's that's life. The water is alive. You know what I mean? But they'd be like, well, um, in order to have life, you need water. No, you don't. <laughs> I mean, you got... You got planets full of methane gas and you got um, asteroids that have no water on them. They got carbon and they got all kind of life in them. Now, I mean, like the, 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 it's your interpretation of what's alive. Now, I mean, like if, if, I, if I plant a seed in the earth, a sunflower, if I take a sunflower seed and plant it in the backyard, then I grew sunflower seeds back in 1993. So I'm, I've seen it with my own eyes. You plant the um, sunflower seed. The sunflower seed grows. And that sunflower, oof, you see this big, with the seeds all in it, whatever. That sunflower will physically react to the sun being seen in the east. We ain't going to say the sun rising, but technically for simple um, explanation. We say the sunrise. The plant will literally turn towards the sun. Now, I mean, if you had that plant in your house and you darkened up the whole room and you put a hole in a curtain and just had one beam of sunlight coming inside that room, that plant, sunflower, in the dark will literally physically grow and turn and lean towards that ray of light. If you move it over there, it'll turn <laughs> and move. Over. That lets you know it's alive. If you have um, a Venus fly plant and it leaks some sugar, some sap, and a fly land on it, and it eats the fly, it's eating the fly? <laughs> it's alive. Know what I mean? So, so if you have trees that grow up two, three hundred feet in the air, they're alive. They, the message tells us how to live. You got trees that live 
since Abraham. Now, I mean, you got trees live two, three, four thousand years. I mean, it's alive. Now, I mean, you know, you 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 know the 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 organic and inorganic materials in regular clay. You put some water on there. You see how all the ancient people make clay pots and all that. Just doing that. Imagine what we call DNA, RNA. Imagine skin cells going inside this clay. Now, I mean, it's like you can't go in the universe and find something dead. Our perception, our misinterpretation may be that something's dead. Now, I mean, we may be like, you know, oh, it's, if, if, if I physically died in a physical form and you buried me in the earth, and you came back two weeks from now, and you dug the dirt up, you'd be like, whoa, he's busy. But look at his hands. They going through metamorphosis. They, it's, it's like insects coming out of there. If I'm alive, if I'm five or 10 or 50 years old, 60 years old, 80 years old, and you took a Q-tip and just rubbed inside my mouth, you took a teardrop, you took a scrape of my skin, Plucking my hair, if I spit on on a on a petri dish or something like that, and you magnified, you'd be like, every part of him is alive, every part of you is alive. Not me. So, you know, it's just that these life forms transform. They go from the simple to the more complex. They go from the complex back to the simple. I mean, we come out of the earth, we go back in the earth. Our bones are stone. Our flesh is vegetation. Our blood is water. We came from atoms, we go back to atoms. The atoms came from energy, we call it the mind. Some people call it, I'll call it the creator. The creator exists everywhere, <laughs> has no beginning nor ending. Energy exists everywhere. Energy is not created nor destroyed. The mind, you can see my physical three pound brain, got a big head. I was born with a seven and a half ounce brain, 14 billion brain cells, a neuron generating the power equal to 170,000 of a volt of electricity. But our thoughts travel 24 million, billion miles per second. Our thoughts travel. That means that our mind is alive. It's alive. I mean, let us move on. Okay. So actions are just like I said, number six, actions are judged by intentions. What is an intention? In the Arabic language, an intention is your niyat. Now, I mean, see, you can you can give somebody some money. You say you'd be like, I donated um a thousand dollars, but you did it from your id, your ego. You didn't do it from the heart. What was your niyat? What was your intent? Now, I mean, say say somebody be like, um, I donated um a dollar and seven cents in the charity plea. And you'd be like, how much money did you have? They'd be like, I only had $2. So you gave the majority, you gave over 50% of your net worth to help others. You gave more than the person that donated $1,000. What is your knee What is your intent? I mean, and you know, you have to be careful with that because, you know, as the messenger says, actions are judged by intentions. Actions may appear wrong. It may look wrong on the physical plane, but what was the underlying circumstances? What was the niya? What was the intent? Now, I mean, you'd be like, oh, um, the guy took and shot the guy and, and killed him. You'd be like, oh, he should get the death penalty. Kill him. He, you know what I mean? Lynch him. You know what I mean? And you'd be like, no, the guy went to the smoothie bar and he ordered a smoothie, but the worker was about to take some drugs, but he seen the manager coming and threw it in the smoothie. The guy paid for this movie. He ain't no drugs was in this movie. And when he took it, he had an adverse reaction because it mixed with his asthma medicine. And he literally was other than himself for about 20 minutes. And in his anxiety, he shot somebody 
that did not deserve to be shot. When he or she goes to the, the judge, they got to look at the knee up. What was the intent? I mean, what was the intent? You'd be like, the guy um, shot up shot up the restaurant that I had my children in, and I grabbed my kids, and we ran outside, and I jumped in the car, and I stepped on the gas to try to get out of there. But in my haste, I accidentally hit an elderly man crossing the street. I was wrong. I, I was not intended. My knee I, or my intention was not to kill him. I mean, but the other guy, he intentionally ran somebody over. His knee or his intent is severe. It's, it's dedicated. It, it, was, it was intentional. So you have to understand that actions are judged by intentions. Actions may appear wrong, but motives bring rewards. Number seven, seek not to find fault in your brother for every fault that you find in him, you possess two. One for finding fault and two for acknowledging it is a fault. It's so easy to judge people. I mean, it's, it's so easy to act like we're sinless, that we're better than somebody. I mean, you know, Prophet Muhammad, thoughts of peace be upon him, you know, they asked him about his son, you know what I mean? And he basically showed them, reportedly, two guards. He showed them a filthy garment. It was filthy, but it had a clean spot. Then he showed them a clean garment. Beautiful, clean, but it had a speck of dirt on it. He said, this is your son. And this is my sin. So you can have good, but it could be a little drip of good that you do. You do all this other corruption, <laughs> I mean, behind the scenes, but you you quick to take that speck out your brother or your sister's eye. I mean, so the messenger warns, seek not to find fault in your brother or sister. For every fault that you find in him or her, you possess two. One, for finding fault, and two, for acknowledging it is a fault. Number eight, let each of us clean our own house. Therefore, it will be less margin for error. See, we can avoid these types of mistakes if we didn't have ranks where everybody judging each other and faking a funk like they holier than thou. The message just warned us in our says, Brian, he said, you should not claim to be holier than thou unless you're really holy. The messenger is the messenger of the law. First, last, and only message. He explained, he's not holier than thou. <laughs> know what I mean, <laughs> he, he, don't, he didn't even claim to be holier than thou. Know what I mean? So you have people that act like they're perfect. Know what I mean? They act like they're holier than thou. No, they're not. Know what I mean? So let each of us clean our own house. Know what I mean? Therefore, it will be less margin for error. See what I'm saying? So if you're in Muhammad's temple or Muhammad's mosque or law school in Philadelphia, New York, California, it's easy to be like, oh, they ain't doing this in, in Texas. They don't, you know, they got the weak breaks in, in that city, in that city. All oh, the brothers, they can't even drill. Them, them, they don't even sell final calls. They don't sell Muhammad's speech. They don't know their lessons. They don't know the 120. They don't eat to live. They don't Ramadan. They, it's easy to just judge like that. Know what I mean? But it's better to tighten up yourself. Tighten up your house. Get your house in order. Literally and spiritually. <laughs> I mean, you know, let each of us clean our own house. Therefore, it will be less margin for error. I mean, the error is going to come up, but it won't be so many errors. All right. Number nine. A Muslim does not talk about another Muslim and errors or faults behind his back to another Muslim, nor does he speak in slander of him near another Muslim. I remember years ago, this was a, this was a, you know, brothers, brothers would come to you and you know what I mean, you'd be like, 
oh, brother so-and-so, sister so you know she this, this, that, and the other. I mean, brother, well, oh, before you came home, you should have seen on Facebook they was doing this, this, this. And when I hear it, it tells me, damn, <laughs> if this brother or this sister of uh, uh, tape and put some salt on their own brother or sister back and take a rusty fork and eat that back out, I know what they're going to do to me. <laughs> I mean, they smile in your face. <laughs> they know the oldie, you know what I mean? So, so it's a thing where the messenger is like, a Muslim does not talk about another Muslim in errors or faults behind his or her back to another Muslim. See, as soon as someone come to you slander, talking about somebody else, you be like, oh, oh, he ain't here. She ain't here. That black bro, they ain't. I ain't getting in all that. Judges for law, as we're going to get into. You know what I mean? So the messenger teaches is, a Muslim does not talk about another Muslim in errors or faults behind his or her back to another Muslim, nor does he or she speak in slander of him or her near another Muslim. That shows a lack of civilization on our part. When we get into that, that's that's how Dr. Yaku got us to argue and fight and kill one another. He told me, he said, rent rooms in their houses and come out the next day and tell the neighbor. Yeah, I heard him. He told me this about you. He told me he's gossip. I got the tea. I got the juice. I got the slander. And once you had them fighting and arguing and killing, you break the ranks. You, <laughs> Yaku's law, divine and conquer come in there and you can rule both sides like that. I mean, you got to remember, what is their neot? What is their intention? I mean, you know, actions are judged by intentions. Actions may appear wrong, but motives bring rewards. What is that motivation? Sometimes it's just pure envy and jealousy. Plain old player hate. They, they, they want to be you. They want to wear your shoes. They want your bow tie. They want your FYU. They want your MGT garbs. You know what I mean? They want your position. They want to get closer to the minister or the reminder or the messenger or the master. You know what I mean? And they going about it the wrong way. But even when they do that, you still have to be patient where others are concerned. You still have to remember that time where when we who knows now knew not then. Now, I mean, you still have to remember, number four, judging is for a law. If you must judge, let him judge himself. I mean, what you do, you be like... I'm not going to feel, I'm not going to slander my brother or sister, you know what I mean? Because I understand the universal law of cause and effect. Ghetto karma, I mean, I Ching, I Fei, what goes around comes around. They'll destroy themselves. You just, you just get out the way of the law's wrath, you know what I mean? You know, when the Holy Quran tells you, you know, the enemy of the angels of the law are the enemies of the law. A law going to handle it. Let the judges for a law. Let them judge himself. Let the mathematics work itself out. You know what I mean? And you'll see a law is with you. You know what I mean? And, and you, you just got to be patient. <laughs> you still got to have that sabori. You still have to be patient. You still have to uh, uh, remember that actions are judged by intentions on the knee. All right? Let's look at number 10. When a Muslim sees another Muslim in error, then let him correct his brother Muslim who has fell in error within a manner of strict private correction. This is, this is what Moses and the angel Kadir or the, the wise man in the Holy Quran wrestled over. Now, I mean, the angel didn't want Moses to soldier with him. He told Musa, Moses said, listen, man, you can't soldier with me because you're not going to have sabori. You're not going to have the patience. You're not going to understand the moves I make. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm, I ain't going to question you. I'm, I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to be proud to die. Yeah, it sounds real hip until the test comes. That that spider, that the web is cast. You know what I mean? Sword 29. You know what I mean? You know, the Holy Quran says, do you think that you will be left alone on saying you believe and that you will not be tested? See, when the test comes, before the test, you'll be like, oh, all praise is due to Allah for the humble Lord Muhammad. All praise is due to Allah for the humble they like, oh, man, they talking about Master Muhammad is a drug dealer. He's, he's a white man. He's from Turkey. He got a lady pregnant. And, you know what I mean? You know, oh, he ain't God. <laughs> they be like, all praise is due to Allah. I live, Bill, kill for Muhammad. 
They got a Malcolm in them start slamming, talking behind his back, and y'all just feed into the gossip. And I mean, <laughs> remember what he said? He said, a Muslim does not talk about no Muslim and errors are false behind us. They behind us like the messenger, this, this, that, and the other. You know what? Oh, the messenger, you know what the MGTs, nah, you know, this child, this, and this, 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 this and sh she told me this. Blah, 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 blah. And there it go. All this undercurrent. I mean, and it's like, yo, for real, for real, this is, this is what we going to do. We going, the man that built the house, <laughs> I mean, we going to say that he's not a carpenter. <laughs> His work shows and proves who he is. He did. I mean, he did prove to us. It's like Jesus walking on water, feeding the multitudes. Moses doing his thing, parting water. You see all these miracles, all these works, and after they show and prove our ignorance, our immaturity, our envy, and our jealousy, and our fear, we still go against them. Shame on us. Now, I mean, number 10, when a Muslim sees another Muslim in error, then let him correct his brother Muslim who has fell in error within a manner of strict private correction. Again, you know, we're taught to use good judgment discretion. We're taught in our 24 principles that a Muslim knows what to say, how to say it, when to say it, where to say it, and whom to say it to. So we know how to say things. Now, I mean, you know, we know when to say things, where to say things. Now, I mean, and... You know, those that's not practicing the dean or the way the messenger don't. You know what I mean? So when we read this in number 10, I don't want to ignore the feminine principle that's there because gender is in all things. So let me let me read it in 2022 for you. When a Muslim sees another Muslim in error, then let him or her correct his or her brother or sister Muslim who has fell in error within the manner of strict private correction. Pull your brother to the side, yo, I mean, boom, bang. And then, you know, now you'd be like, okay, being as though you treated the issue fairly, I'm going to treat the issue fairly. This is what's really going on. I mean, you're like, oh, okay. It makes perfect sense now. Be like, well, won't you, like the message, the message, they, the message told the believers in 1965 in the Labor's Day tapes, part one and two, he said, when Malcolm threw all the mud in his eyes, he said a lot of the ministers looking at him like, why don't he wipe the mud out his eye? He said, I didn't wipe the mud out my eyes because I was wondering why y'all ain't wiped the mud out my eyes. Think about it. <laughs> Number 11, a Muslim should remove all resentment. Now, that is so difficult. The Bible teaches us a brother or sister offended. It's hard to be one than a strong city. So you can't, you know, uh, do wrong if someone do you wrong. The message told us, you know, do good regardless of whom. Or even if someone treated you wrong, you got to do them right. I'm talking believers, not me. You know, because you have to have love for your brother and sister. You have to have that Rahman or Rahim. You got to have that love and that mercy. Not me. You have to have that beneficence, the compassion and understand that we are descendants of slavery and we suffer from that psychosis. We suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression. I mean, we, we went through a lot over the past 500, 6,000 years worldwide. You know what I mean? So we have to do what's best for the future not ourselves, but for the future generations. We're trying to get them, we're trying to push the nation stronger, get them higher, you know what I mean? Break these chains. Number 12, a Muslim should not brag or act loud being boastful. See, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to show off, to brag and boast, you know what I mean? You know, but it's better to walk the earth in humility. And I mean, the message explained to us that no matter how big and heavy you may think you is, when you step on the earth, the earth holds you up. You're not that big. You're not that deep. You're not that heavy. And I mean, you, you, you put a Navy ship in the ocean, 
that thing going to flu. You know what I mean, you put it on land, it'll crush me. <laughs> it, seems, it seems heavy to me, but in the universal order of things, this whole rock called Earth is floating around the sun like y'all really ain't. You know what I mean? <laughs> don't don't get carried away. That sun be like, y'all would disappear. The moon be like, I'm out. Y'all would be underwater overnight. You know what I mean? So you have to walk the earth humble and submissive. Number 13. A Muslim should be discretionary and not selfish. You gotta be discreet. You know what I mean? Everything that you do don't have to be public. You know what I mean? You just do, you make moves on your own. You know what I mean? You know, you, it's like, that's why I'm, I'm a lone wolf. You know what I mean? You know, one, one of the things about being in the ministry is like, you always have security people. I'm like, I'm humble. I'm like, I don't need no security, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, it's like my security is my mind. My brain is going to secure me. That brain, them thoughts is going to prevent situations. You know what I mean? It's like I can say the wrong thing and it can cause extreme harm to others. So I have to humble myself and like, oh, let me let me be discretionary in this. You know what I mean, be like, okay, well, they doing this, they saying this, they just so what? I'll take all the blood. You know what I mean, you let them crucify, you carry your cross, you follow down Elijah Muhammad. You know what I mean, that's that's with the territory. But you just keep your faith in Master Far Muhammad and Messenger Elijah Muhammad. You keep studying the truth, you keep sharing the truth, you keep doing your job. You know what I mean, you told the messenger a long time ago that your in your prayers, your life and your death and your sacrifices is all for Allah, who came to person of Master Far Muhammad, to all praises to do forever. Number 14, a Muslim should not make unnecessary excuses. Sometimes you have to have legitimate excuses, but not an unnecessary excuse. I mean, you know, it's like people make New Year's resolutions, you know what I mean? But it's like, there's no need to do all that. You know what I mean? Just strive. Just try. You know what I mean? You'd be like, okay, this year I'm going to lose weight. This year I'm going to do... You may fall off the wagon. You may gain weight. You know what I mean? But if you're humble and keep it real with yourself, your, your position is, I'm going to do this or that if it's the will of God in person. I'm going to do this or that. Inshallah, Sakin, if it's the will of the God in person. Because now your word is bond. As you be like, yeah, that's that's my niyat. My intent is to lose this weight. My niyat, my intent is to discipline myself, to, to lift these weights, to get this money, to pay these bills off, to whatever you're trying. Learn my lessons, you know what I mean? But you may not, you be like, I'm striving to get to the stars. You may not get there, but you off the earth. You on the moon, you made progress. All praise is due to Allah. Number 15. A Muslim should not participate in activities leading away from Allah. A Muslim should not participate in activities leading away from Allah. That's not just physical, but literally spiritual. Now I mean like people may jump on the bandwagon and they be like, oh, the new thing now is we believe in this new mystery God. We, we're now going to mix the teaching of Elijah Muhammad up with this spooky stuff over here. We're going to follow this up. We're going to include this doctrine. And, and it's like leading away from a law God who came to person, Master Far Muhammad, his first, last, and only messenger. And you like, these is brothers and sisters I love and respect. And I get with them in the manner of strict private correction. I've shown discretion. I'm not going on social media slang. Oh, they teaching this, this. Act like I'm the, you know, I'm I'm the perfect father of Elijah Muhammad. I know the real truth. I'm going to be humble and submissive. I mean, I'm not going to judge them. I mean, I'm going to share the original divine and direct teachings of Elijah Muhammad so that they can see for themselves. I'm going to let a law judge a law. And I mean, now in doing that, I mean, we should not participate in activities that lead away from the law. So that thing's like, yo, that path is going to take you away from 
the Surat al Mustaqim that Masfar Muhammad laid out for us, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad laid out for us. And I don't want to see you fall off the path. I don't want to see you fall down in the ditch. You know what I mean? So I'm going, I'm definitely going to um, remind you of the original divine teachers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. If you ask me privately or publicly, do I believe whatever spooky stuff you're going into leading away from the law, I'm a privately or publicly like, heck no. <laughs> I mean, and I'm going to share with you why. I could be wrong. You may have something that I need to learn. So I have to be humble still. <laughs> See what I'm saying? See, all this stuff, these lessons, they all work together. Let's look at number 16. It is not right to pray as a Muslim and then continue in Christian ways. Now, the messenger is not trying to diss the Christians. <laughs> I mean, what he's talking about here is those that follow organized religions. It could be the Sunnah. It could be whatever. <laughs> I mean, this thing is like, it is not right to pray as a Muslim, meaning that if you're saying you're upright, standing upright, to him who originated the heavens and the earth, you bear witness that the black man is God. <laughs> I mean, there is no mystery God in the nation of Islam. Contrary to the spooky stuff that you see going on today, the original teacher of Al-Balaj Muhammad, there is no mystery God. The black man. Every time you look at the black man, you're looking at God, according to Al-Balaj Muhammad. Out of the black man, there is the supreme one that we call Master Far Muhammad. He is the supreme Allah, the one over all of us, the one that sees and hears that which we can't see and hear. Now, I mean, now, in this, we can't put on our FY uniforms and put on our MGT uniforms and read message to the black man and bear witness to Allah and the person of Master Far Muhammad and al Muhammad, and yet we hold on to all that spooky stuff. The three-in-one God, the mystery God. We hold on to the mystery devil. We think in hell is underground and heaven is after we physically die. We talking about a law outside of ourselves. I mean, you're like, yeah, law. You just, what a law? <laughs> I mean, you, you're talking like you in the East with the Orthodox, they, they don't believe that the black man is God. We're teaching that a law is all of us. It is no mystery God in this cosmology or theology or mathematical teachings and in our lessons, okay? Number 17, let each of us search our own pockets before putting our hands into the pockets of another. Let each of us search our own pockets. See, we all have faults. I mean, you know, it's like every day I have to correct things in my character, in my mentality, in my behavior, in my actions and reactions, in my words. I mean, you know, um, I have to lower my gauge. <laughs> I mean, you know, I have to be like, I ain't going to listen to this. I got to turn that off. I, mean, I got to get away from that person. They come with negative energy. All they do is gossip and backbite, you know what I mean? Like, to you be your way, to me be mine. I mean, you're breaking my peace. I mean, I'm out. You know what I mean? So, you you know, you can do bad by yourself. So, remember that your lessons are your blessings. And this is the 17 ways to display Islamic culture by Messenger Elijah Muhammad. And I leave you with the closing words that I love to leave you with. Remember, family, only the messenger's message can guide you, me, we, and us through this age of mess. Assalamu alaikum. The struggle continues.